Happy March 28th, everybody. We'll get started in just a few minutes. Got a link to the agenda in the chat. Please mark your attendance. And if you have anything you want to chat about today, please add that. Uh, I ask any uh, sub project leads to put an update on their initiative if possible and flag if you'd like us to talk about it. Started at uh, three minutes after the hour or so. David Wheeler, was this the group you wanted to talk about a couple things? Uh, let's see, as, as far as vulnerability disclosures, no, that actually would be the vulnerability disclosures working group. Okay. Um, but uh... I get a lot of GitHub email. I don't remember where it all comes from and goes to. It all goes to you. Uh, a lot of it does come to me. It does sound like a personal problem, too. It does. <laughs> and I need to get off of the... Uh, I need to get off a couple security mailing lists. <laughs> How else can you stay informed? <laughs> I signed up for the great MFA distribution and then never, never left. Now, I'm on that list, too. I haven't seen any emails. Have there been a whole bunch of emails? No, no, no. To uh, be able to ask projects if they wanted tokens. I oh, right. Okay, and yes. I never yes. Uh, undid that? Oh, I never okay. undid I'm... that. <laughs> yeah, I, I did have, undid that. Yes. I have a folder in my mailbox that has like a couple thousand messages uh, sitting unread. Got it. Got it. Okay. All right, everybody. I put a link to the agenda in the Zoom chat. Please sign in on the March 28th edition of our call because we're not talking about C and C++ compiler hardening options today, unless we wanted to. But that is a future meeting. Do we have anybody on the call today that is interested? Well, you could talk about it if you really wanted to, Randall. Uh, I'm not going to stop you. That's just not the sole topic of the call. Um, we have anyone that's interested in helping us take notes today? I'll help you out. Which way? Well, thank you. Appreciate that. I will have to. Awesome. Thank you, Marta. Welcome back. We haven't seen you in a while. Awesome. In a while. That's the time zone. We are back to summertime. Well, we always could find a new time if the group the majority of the group wanted to move so keep that in the back of your head it's um, not really that it's the the uh u.s moving time zones and then we're left behind and then we're moving catching up and everything's uh, you know i don't know where i am anymore <laughs> oh dear well you're on the best call of the week is where you are robert absolutely <laughs> All right. Do we have any new friends that wanted to introduce themselves and say hello today? All right. As you have any items you'd like to discuss, please add those in the open section. Uh, of our sub projects, which I have listed all of them below, do we have any of those uh, leaders around that wanted to share an update on any of our uh, sub projects or SIGs? Um, maybe a small update. So um, we actually are busy with the new stack, like I said in the previous meeting. So we have now uh, the whole thing working at least you can deploy lab, delete labs and all that good stuff, automation of search management and um, all that cool stuff. 
Um, myself and Randall also had a meeting with the uh, CRE project. Ooh. And they promised to come back and join the meeting as well. Probably this one uh, slipped their agenda. Uh, but the idea was that they will join the meeting as well and they uh, will show up show up again. Great. So, oh, uh, that's awesome. Glenn, who, Glenn, who yeah. is this again? CRE. Who is this? CRE. Uh, Spiros. Oh, CRE. Oh, okay. Spiros. okay CRE. Yeah. Got it. And uh, we're also looking into how we can maybe uh, collaborate and uh, get also uh, that data set and the CRE into the uh, knowledge graph that we use in uh, SKF. Excellent. That's yeah. great. Any questions for Glenn about SKF updates? <laughs> Doesn't look like it, Dan. All right, so uh, an update about the education SIG. That uh, effort is still being uh, massaged to, be, to present to the governing board. We have a couple folks from the uh, governing board TAC governance committee that are reviewing it, but I'm working with folks from uh, LF Legal on a pretty awesome little uh, presentation, an executive kind of summary for the effort. So uh, we anticipate We'll get uh, some forward progress on that soon and hopefully get word on uh, what people think about the awesome education plan. Any questions about that? All right, do either um, our source code management folks or our C and C++ folks wanna give any brief updates? hasn't really been much um, progress in the source code management thing. Um, I'm hoping to add some energy into that over the coming days. So, yeah. Groovy. I've seen a lot of activity around our compiler options guide, which is awesome. So I would encourage everyone to check it out. Uh, last little bit of administrivia before we move on to opens. Uh, the vote closed for the adoption of the memory safety SIG and 11 eligible folks uh, voted in favor of it. There were no dissenting opinions. So uh, therefore we will be adopting the memory safety group under uh, Nell. So welcome Nell and the crew to the family. Uh, they meet every other Thursday if you would like to uh, participate or learn more. Uh, Thursdays at 1 p.m. Eastern, uh, every other Thursday, is their uh, calls. Uh, I recognize Dave Rousseau. Thanks, Krobe. Uh, is there a uh, landing page that we can share as we try and drum up some support for people who might want to join that SIG? Well, it's funny you mentioned that, Dave. I spent the morning monkeying around with our uh, repository. And uh, so the long answer is, uh, short answer is yes. The long answer is uh, it's in flight. So if anyone is interested, I have uh, compiled all of the sub projects and SIGs into a table, provided uh, relevant links to their Git repos, their Slack channels, their mailing lists, so that uh, everyone can kind of see uh, who, what, and where, and how. And uh, with them just being adopted, I got the note from the uh, operations team, I think yesterday that they had completed it. So I will begin working with Nell and that group in getting their landing page set up and uh, kind of uh, bringing over any existing work because they've been uh, toiling away for a while now, about, almost a year maybe, about, about as long as uh, some of the other groups uh, some of the other uh, SIGs, so they might have some uh, additional artifacts they want to add into that repo. Did I answer your question, sir? You did. This is great. Thank you very much for sharing. Sharing is caring. <laughs> Glad to do it. All right. Uh, please add any additional items in the open section, and I will yield to the human, Jonathan. Uh, let's talk about URL parsers. Oh, uh, question before, David? 
Yeah, just real quick, uh, we uh, were doing the updates and everything else. I thought I'd do quick updates on uh, for, for best practices badge. Uh, we've been having this Rails 7 update for a while. We think we're getting close. And for the uh, Security Fundamentals course, um, <clears throat> it, the course has talked about something called involving HTML targets for a while. Um, and there have been rumblings about, hey, browsers have changed and this is no longer an issue. But it turns out verifying that it's actually not a problem or not has been rather complicated. Um, we think we finally nailed down what the thing, what the actual truth is and therefore what we can put in the course, which is it's mostly but not completely gone and therefore it's more complicated to talk about. Mm -hmm. So if you've got any last minute uh, comments, love to hear it. But we uh, heard back from Mozilla folks. So from our friends in Mozilla, thank you. Um, who kind of helped us uh, get the, uh, the, the, the details uh, straightened out. So the plan is to merge this very, very soon unless uh, somebody says something soon. Thanks. Any questions or comments for David on the course or the badges update? If you'll be in Vancouver for the Open Source North America Summit, check out Mr. Wheeler and I's amazing presentation where we will tell developers on how they can earn a best practices badge and also get integrated into the scorecard project. It'll be great. All right, now I yield the floor to Jonathan. Take it away, sir. Um, I don't know if this is the right group for this. I don't even know where the right place for this conversation is, but- well, this is the I best place. Talking... Yeah, I know. I was talking to Luigi uh, about this topic. He brought it up. And then this is an area that I have particular experience with. Um, so uh, there is uh, there are two standards for parsing URLs in the industry. There is the old RFC spec. And then there's the second spec, which is the current living specification that is uh, under Whatwig, and it defines a newer standard for parsing URLs. And um, the the new the, if you're using a URL parser to um, allow list or deny list a certain set of subdomains to be resolved, and the thing that is doing the resolving of the URL is different from the thing that is doing the allow listing, you can allow list domains or deny list domains that given a specific, a specially crafted domain can resolve to something else. And uh, yeah, so yeah, great, great times, great security vulnerabilities. Uh, Orange Psy did a black hat talk about this and it, covered like how he changed four remote four vulnerabilities to achieve remote code execution on github um back because of github's filtering um yeah because, and, and like he did other research he found that like for example um uh a lot of php libraries will use php's url parser but then make requests with curl and the php parser for urls are different from the one that uh, is different from the one that curl uses. Um, and, uh, I spoke to Badger who, uh, or, uh, Daniel who run, who runs curl. And there was a discussion about, Hey, this, you know, doesn't, uh, your parser doesn't fan stand, uh, doesn't support the current working, you know, living standard. And he's like, Cur curl implements the, uh, the old RFC spec and not the current spec. And so what you'll find is that because of this, a lot of old lang like older languages, for example, Java, you know, curl, I, some of the stuff will support the old RFC spec for URL parsing and um, the newer, like, you know, anything web-based. So JavaScript libraries, the, what, the browsers, all that stuff implement the new standard for URL, URL parsing. And so we have this, um, uh, ambiguity in the industry about certain URLs and whether or not they are a certain host or another, a different host. And, uh, you know, I was thinking like maybe somebody 
in the open SSF or somewhere, we should like decide that 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 the industry should be doing, you know, one of two of these things. And I don't know what the right answer to that one of these two of these things is, but uh, it does lead to vulnerabilities and, and there are probably more than we have currently found because it's kind of an obscure bit of knowledge. Anyways, that's my like, I don't have an answer, but a lot of questions. Dan, you had a hand up. Yeah, um, welcome to my life. No, uh, the uh, uh, the uh, thing that I've got to say is this sounds like something that the W3C tag might want to get involved with, with which is a group that I happen to co-chair. Um, and it's a group that often gets in between W3C, IETF, and what WG things that have uh, efforts. This is something that we've covered before, how there's this ambiguity between the, the living URL spec and the uh, RFC URL spec. And um, I'd be happy to help, basically, uh, even though I can't, I can't imagine that those words just came out of my mouth. Um, I'd be happy to help, <laughs> help for this um, because it's, yeah, there's some scars. Yes, exactly. <laughs> um, and, uh, but it, it is something that, you know, you know it, it takes getting some people in the room together to facilitate having that discussion. And those people are people like Mark Nottingham, who like co-chairs the HTTP working group in in ITF, and um, maybe some folks like Anna Van Kestren, who's currently at Apple, who's very active in the in the WG, and uh, both those people used to be tag members as well. So um, there's something that I maybe I can help is what I'm saying. Uh, maybe we can maybe we can have an off channel discussion. If if you're saying that it's something that OpenSSF as well is is like bringing concern to the table on this, then that is that is that could um, prompt a deeper discussion on this topic and maybe get some people talking to each other who haven't who haven't resolved this issue yet. Cool. Um, let's chat more. Yeah, David. Yeah, I would not assume there's only two um <laughs> okay uh you I mean you've got the rfc you've got um you know the what wig you've got the uh there's the older w3c spec it was kind of implied and frankly the what we get you know is feels free to change specs at any time i wouldn't assume that the current spec has all is what has always been from them so there's probably multiple versions and they don't make versions very obvious so and then there's also what WG uh, doesn't what WG doesn't do versions, right? You know, that's right. their whole and thing. I, <laughs> and I spoke right. to I spoke to the guy I spoke to Dan uh, Dan who writes curl and he's like yeah so we implement the RFC spec but also with some changes because they're stupid decisions that were made and like it's like oh great like you know there is like what the spec is and what is like reality, right. And and you you keep saying URLs, but there's also URIs and IRIs and other glorious things. So um, I, I don't have a solution. I just want to observe that the problem is even worse. So <laughs> I don't have a solution, um, but it does seem like there's a need for one. And probably step one is collect the different specs, trying to identify the differences and at least some of the ways that they've already been exploited or could be exploited. Yeah, but, um, yeah, I, I would a... really suggest focusing the discussion around threats, existing threats. Like right. this bad thing is happening out there. Let's try to fix it. Because the problem with this is, as David pointed out, there are all their IRIs, there are URIs, there are URNs, there are all these different things, some of which are being used in various places in the world, uh, you know, like academic uh, publications and this kind of thing, and and there's there's a lot of um, so putting the focus on concrete threats, I think, will help to focus that discussion because otherwise it could completely go off the rails into La La Land, which is what I've found before when I try and have a discussion about URLs and URIs and stuff like that. 
Yeah, the um the best resource that I found so far is from um Daniel on uh he's got a I think he put a blog post up that's like my like something like my URL is not isn't your URL and it's like the list of like here are all the differences and these are all the vulnerabilities that occur because of that. Um I can't yeah, think that's he's just awesome. He is he is yeah. A, yeah, yeah, absolutely. Uh, where, where, where is this? If you I'm trying to find the article, but I mean, all of the there's like a bunch of log uh, links that are off of this, this hacker one. Before. I got it. Yep. I might suggest if we find if this group finds this topic of interest, we either could uh, continue the conversation in Slack or a GitHub discussion. Hmm. And then we can kind of uh, maybe collect some of the uh, state of the art as uh, some of the links are being shared here and then potentially see who's interested and maybe uh, excited to try to help solve a problem. Hmm. I will yeah. um, also uh, message Daniel and see if he wants to be involved. Cause like, he, you know, of the people that are most, most experienced with this topic, um, I don't feel at all like I know enough to to engage in this topic. Just I can recognize there's a problem here and uh, know that something should be done, even though I don't necessarily have the solutions. Okay. Any other questions or feedback for Jonathan on this topic? Yeah, uh, I guess one real quick, um, which is I don't think, you know, if it turns out the tags, the better group to resolve this, that's awesome. Um, I think basically, at least though, trying to collect what the problems, threats, issues are, um, is that it, no matter what, that's the first step. So if we can mm. try to capture that, and then if it turns out that it's this group, it's the tag, it's something else, that's great. We just want it solved. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I'm not, I was not suggesting like, this is the tags thing. Don't touch it. No, 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 no. Just saying, I, I maybe, maybe we can help with some tag energy. That's all. Yeah. yeah right, I, I got it. Got it. That, and that's very much what I mean. I, I, I'm basically trying to make sure that, you know, the, the, the goal isn't to try to capture ownership. The goal is to solve problem. <laughs> and then we could document a good practice and talk about it. Mm. We could. We could. Um, by the way, if there's in, if there's inconsistencies, the long term solution, which is rough, is convincing different projects and libraries <laughs> to agree. <laughs> but there's no chance of that until there's agreement on what it is. Right. Any additional thoughts on URL, URL parsing? I'll make a quick note for the best practices uh, badge. Uh, we're ridiculously picky about URLs for uh, repos. Um, you know, forget the spec. Heck, that stack, most of that stuff's not allowed. So, you know, oh, you want you want the URL, it's gonna be HTTP or HTTPS. You know, yes, you could use FTP, but we're, we're not going to allow that. Only these characters, only these this, only these that. And remarkably, I've only gotten one proposed change in the last year, I think, where hey, at symbols are allowed and we actually use them. Okay, fine. But basically we've started by being ridiculously picky and slowly expand. And yes, that means that there's a lot of com fully compliant URLs that we don't allow, but until somebody actually shows a need, it's much easier when you just forbid a whole bunch of stuff and then slowly add only which, what, what makes sense. Uh, Cause then we don't have to worry about a whole bunch of weird cases that are possibly misinterpreted because, well, that wasn't allowed either. All right, folks. So look for uh, some continued dialogue on this. And Jonathan, just let us know where you'd like to have that in Slack or a discussion or. Yep, yep. All right. I see Daniel have, would like to talk about scorecards. Yes, oh, uh, it's just to... briefly. Uh, I had a discussion last week. Um, Brian Russell and Laurent Simon, 
uh, mm -hmm. from Google uh, are talking to different people about scorecards. And uh, so I uh, sat on a call with them and answered questions that they had about scorecards. And one of the things that they're talking about is um, introducing more content into scorecards itself, right? So um, where the uh, uh, it would, instead of it just giving you a number, uh, or, you know, would say these things, these specific things are misconfigured. Um, and here is the remediation, right? And that's when my ears pricked up because I was like, okay, well that now you're talking about content, which is very similar to content that's being de developed or has been developed in the best practices working group. And gosh, maybe it'd be good to synchronize that content. And I was thinking specifically because some of these issues are are already being talked, are already, there's an overlap between these uh, topics and the stuff that we're talking about in the SCM discussion that are coming out of Legitify in terms of like um, uh, SCM configuration options. And uh, be good if they were at least saying the same thing, maybe even synchronized, or maybe the scorecard output should be linking to some uh, material which is being curated by the, by the best part. Anyway, there needs to be some coordination. So I just thought I'd kind of raise it um, to your to your attention, Krobe. Uh I was a participant in one of Laurent's conversations. Uh, they, Laurent and Azim actually are uh, working group members. Uh, they haven't popped in a while in a while because yeah, they, they're they, so California that's based. that yeah that led to some discussion about because they they actually told me that exactly that they hadn't popped in in a while yeah so yeah but uh, they meet every other Thursday at uh, four p.m. Eastern which would be uh, eighteen hundred UTC which would be super late for our European friends but uh, yeah I, I think it's a worthwhile effort uh, I, we have a great long running relationship with that team. They're officially part of this group. So yeah, let's, uh, is anyone interested in trying to help wrangle a, uh, a meet and greet and kind of a, a sync between uh, our, our groups officially? I, I feel like there should be like a one-off yeah. half hour, you know, short and, short and sharp, yeah. kind of like meeting of the minds about it. And I'd be happy to be a part of that. I'd like to be a part of it because we're contributing in the scorecard. So yeah. As is Intel. So yeah, uh, is anyone interested in trying to uh, set up some time with Laurent and Azim and crew and uh, members of this group? I can make it. Thank you, sir. I appreciate it. Um, I have all the relevant links to scorecard if anyone, if, uh, and they're they have their own Slack, and they're also in our Slack and everything. So I just reach out to them. They're pretty re, pretty speedy in response. So I think we should be able to get something set up in the next week or so. And we would like to try to make it uh, probably around this time, uh, maybe a half hour further, so it'd be early morning California, and that still gives us some overlap with our European friends. Thank you. Appreciate it. All right. And next up, uh, Abishay wanted to talk about the uh, C and C++ hardening guide. Right. So uh, this update is, uh, as you said, uh, relevant for the C and C++ hardening guide. Uh, basically, um, Rob reached out uh, to, uh, to let us know that uh, uh, the Microsoft uh, C++ compiler is currently not uh, represented in the guide that is uh, being worked on. Uh, so we have a new team member uh, who is joining the calls now, uh, Gabriel De Dos Royce. Um, and additionally, we have the BIM scheme uh, tool, uh, which is a compiler slash linker uh, checking tool that is open source uh, by uh, Michael Fanning's team at Microsoft. Um, they are also currently working on sanitizing uh, their uh, rules, uh, which are built uh, into BIM scheme, uh, into a format that can be worked on by the CNC++ hardening guide. 
uh, that will complement what's already there, the GCC and the CLANG. Uh, so we are expecting that it's still work in progress. Uh, so it's hard to commit on a time, uh, but uh, safely saying that uh, in the next three, four weeks, uh, we should have that uh, document sanitized and ready uh, to be uh, digested by the same group. So hopefully Gabriel will uh, lead this effort into the into that uh, working project and we're excited about that. Awesome. Any uh, questions or comments for Avishé about that? I'll note that I, I, I'm doing something similar with um, Diana um, as part of the uh, Intel compiler so that we can have a representation of any, all the major popular compilers for developers to lean into whatever path they pick. Um, David. Yeah, um, I, those who have been deeply involved in the compiler options stuff already know about this, but uh, the, there's actually rationale for this. Um, the GCC, CLang, and Intel compilers all take the same syntax for options. And if the options are the same, they generally are exactly the same names. Uh, the Microsoft C compiler is is quite different. Options begin with slash. All the names are different. Everything else is different. And so it makes more sense to have them as separate documents. Uh, it's more like two different programming languages more than anything else. So there's there's no, you know, so um, I, you know, I welcome it. I think it just for um, simplicity's sake, it makes sense for them to be in two different documents. Uh, because there may be there almost certainly are options than one the that are not in the other. They don't always do the same thing. So, you know, mm -hmm. here, if you have this situation, go here. If you have that situation, go there. Thanks. And we have the amazing power of the internet and GitHub to be able to have two similar files in a same same folder <laughs> and and reference each other. Ooh, Randall. I was going to check if uh, we ever got to reach out to AMD. I, I forget who was going to reach out to the members that were here. Oh, it was probably me. So many action items. Um, <laughs> not, po not pointing fingers, Crow. Oh, you're pointing that finger. I see. <laughs> uh, who is the gentleman's name from AMD? Nathan Menhorn is part of the Vulnerability Disclosure Working Group. And he probably would be at least a point of contact to ask inside. Uh, so you could either wait for me to get around to doing that, or if somebody was particularly uh, uh, motivated, they could reach out to Nathan. I can get you his contact information. Cool. I'll, I'll send you a Slack message and I can do that if you would. Cool. Would yeah, Nathan's good people. He's been part of that group for a while. Um, he might not be the guy himself, but he might know the person inside AMD to get us uh, that, that feedback. Sure. Thank you. Yeah. Very excited about this compiler project. I think this is, will be a very useful resource for developers and kind of help clear up uh, some foundational security things. Very excited. All right. Do we have any additional, um, any more feedback on uh, the compiler guide. Do we have any other topics the group would like to discuss today? All right, I'm gonna sit down hopefully in the next couple of weeks and do a, a backlog scrub. Uh, Dan and uh, David and I maybe can sit down and just slack something to kind of get some of these things uh, dispositioned so that we can have a clean set of issues to uh, be working off of. And barring any additional topics, I think we can adjourn for the day. Thank you, everybody, for your time, attention, and participation. We will see you all very soon. The DE and I subcommittee will be having a call in just about 20 minutes or so. So if you're curious about the education SIG and our DE and I subcommittee, pop on that call. We'll talk to everybody later. Have a great day. <laughs>